it's Trish with Crafting Cousins. We are so happy you stopped by our channel today. If you are new here, welcome. We hope you like what you see and will hit that subscribe button and come back often. If you are returning, thank you so much. We truly appreciate you. Today we will be continuing our Christmas in July series. I will be making a rustic Christmas wood round that will not require any wording, a quick and easy ornament that is perfect for the kids, and an upcycled mail sorter that will be a gift for my son and his wife. Now, let's get started. Hey y'all, let's craft. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these 14 inch plywood rounds that I got from Hobby Lobby. They come six in a pack and they're $12.99, but every other week they have them on sale for 40% off. I'm also going to use this square dowel. This was part of a tomato steak that I got from Dollar General, but you can also get these at Hobby Lobby. Some Waverly chalk paint in crimson and in ink, a jot permanent marker, some greenery, and some Christmas florals that I had left over from last year. These came from Dollar Tree and Walmart. A pop tab off of a soda can, some super glue wood glue, and some fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Now this project, I'm going to do a wood round for Christmas, and this one is not going to have any wording on it, so you don't have to worry about Cricut letters or stick-on letters. This one's going to be simple. I'm going to be putting this wood dowel across the front. I want this to look like a jingle bell, so I measured off where I need to cut it, and then I'm going to use my four-inch table saw from Harbor Freight and cut it down. Now, we get a lot of questions about this table saw, so I will put a link to it down below. Now I'm going to use my sanding block and just take off the splinters that it makes on the end. And then I'm gonna attach it about midway down my plywood round. I'm going to use some wood glue to make sure I get that strong hold. And I'll use a little bit of hot glue to hold it until my wood glue sets. Once I get my piece across the center of this, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and give it a really good coat and leave it to dry. Now, I only did one coat because I want this to look rustic, so I didn't want it to have a good solid look to it. I wanted it to have that kind of beat up rustic look. I started off only painting the front of this, but when I start to put my hanger on, I realized that I needed to paint the back, so I will fix that. Now, once my paint is dry, I took a pencil and I just kind of sketched in the pieces that are the opening for my jingle bell. I'm just kind of doing like a large comma, but you do whatever works best for you. I wasn't worried about it being perfect because it is going to be rustic. Once I was happy with how it looked sketching it in, I took my jot permanent marker and filled that in. And then I'm going to take some of my ink chalk paint and a wet paper towel, or you could use a baby wipe. And I'm just gonna kind of smear it around those edges and hit the edges of my wood dowel just to give this that rustic beat up look. You do this as heavy or as light as you prefer. Then I'm gonna use my sanding block and go around and just rough it up a little more and kind of blend that all in. Now we're gonna put a hanger on the back. I'm using a pop tab off of a soda can. I bent it up a little bit and then flooded it with hot glue. And this is when I realized that my paint had bled over to the back and I don't like for my backs to look messy. I tried sanding it off and I couldn't get it all off. So I grabbed my crimson paint and I painted the whole thing. And then I'm just going to set that aside and let it all dry. Now the last thing we need to do is decorate the top of this. I grabbed some of this garland that I had left over from last year. I got this from Walmart. I like cutting pieces off and using it. And I did use some of my super glue fix all adhesive just to make sure that this was going to stay in place. Once I got that glued down, I used this white poinsettia right in the middle. And then I'm going to also put a little bit of hot glue on these edges just to make sure that this doesn't pop off. The last thing I'm going to do is add some of these red berries to each side, and once we get those glued down, this project will be complete. Thank you. 
Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wooden stars that I got in a pack from Walmart, but they also sell these at the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, some wording that I printed out from my computer. Now you can do this freehand, but I never trust myself to get the right dimensions, so I always print mine out. And I will put a link to this down below if you would like to use this particular saying for your project. A pencil, any pencil will do. Some cording, I'm gonna use this that I got from Dollar General. Some leftover greenery that I had from last year and some little red berries. A fine tip permanent marker and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this is going to be a really simple project that I think would be perfect to do with the kids. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint my star with my white Waverly chalk paint. I do make sure that I paint the front, the back, and the sides because you're gonna be able to see this from all sides when it's hanging on your tree. And then once I get a good coat on it, we'll set it aside to dry. Once my paint is completely dry, I come back with a ruler and a pencil, and I'm just going to lightly draw in some lines that are gonna give me the look of shiplap. Then I'm gonna come back with my pencil, and I'm just gonna sketch them in a little bit thicker so they show up better, and I take my finger, and I'm just going to go over it, and this is going to blend it in and give it a softer look. Then I take my pencil and I go all around the edges of my star, and this is just going to distress those edges. I smear those with my finger as well, and it's going to make it all blend in. To do the wording for my ornament, I cut it out and then I scribble on the back with my pencil. I lay it on my star where I want it to go and I trace over it. This is just going to transfer that wording to my project. Once I get my letters transferred, I come back in with a fine tip marker and fill it in. Now on the silent, I do come back and use a brush marker and this just kind of gave it some depth and made it pop out. But this fine tip marker worked perfect on the night because it is a smaller font. Now, as I said before, I think this would be the perfect project to do with the kids. You can let them make it their own, and it's the perfect time filler whenever they are out on break. They can use the silent night or any phrase that they want. To make a hole in this, to make a hanger, I used my awl that I got from Hobby Lobby. You can get these for like $2.50, but you could also just use a hole punch. Once I got a hole in the top, I've pushed my cording through. I'm gonna trim it off and then I tie a knot in the top and this is going to give me a loop for hanging. The last thing I want to do is decorate it. So I used a little piece of greenery that I had left over from last year. Then I'm gonna glue some of these little berries in the middle of that. And once you get this on, this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old mail sorter that I got from Goodwill Outlet for a dollar. One of these sawtooth hangers from Walmart. Some cup hooks. I didn't have three of the same color, but that's okay, we'll make it work. Some Waverly chalk paint in white and some fine grit sandpaper from the Dollar Tree. 
Now this project is actually going to be a gift to my son and daughter-in-law. They recently got their own home and they were saying that they needed something that they could sort their mail and bills into. They wanted a section that they could put incoming in and then one that they could put their outgoing or their paid in so that they would know what they've done. So I'm always finding these mail sorters at the thrift store and when I found this one I knew it would be perfect. I really loved all the decorative detail that was on here but they do have a farmhouse style home so I decided to take my white Waverly chalk paint and give this a really good coat of paint. I thought this was going to bring out that detail and I knew I could distress it to give it that farmhouse look. I painted the inside and the outside front and back and set it aside to dry. Once our paint is completely dry, I grab my fine grit sandpaper and I'm just going to go over this and do some distressing. I went over all of that detail work to really make it pop out. And then I also did the edges and all the corners of this, those places that naturally get distressed over time. And you can do this, you know, to your liking. Do it as heavy or as light as you like. Now, since they have very limited counter space, I knew they wanted something they could hang up and this would be easily modified to do so. I found the center on the back of this and then I'm just going to give it some support by putting a book under it and I'm going to nail on a sawtooth hanger. Since this is going to be hanging up, I thought that it would be nice to put some cup hooks on the bottom. And this is just going to give them some more storage. They can hang their keys or whatever from that. So I marked this off. I put a hole in the center and one on each side. I'm going to do a little starter hole with a small drill bit. And then I'm going to screw in some cup hooks. Now, I didn't have three cup hooks that were the same color, but that's okay because once I got these in, I just took some of my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to paint over them. This is going to blend it in with the piece and make it all look the same. And then once you do this and the paint is dry, this project will be complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.